Did you know that the largest block of voters isn't Democrats or Republicans? It's people who don't usually vote. What would happen if everyone voted? The missing voters are predominantly the people who face the largest barriers to economic opportunity and security, and who support the most progressive ideas for how to fix our nation. They're people of color, young people, people with lower incomes who are often working multiple jobs and don't get time off to vote. So what would happen if everyone voted? Transformation. It turns out that the people who are most likely to vote in every election have different priorities than those who don't. On issue after issue, a majority of more affluent, regular voters opposed the progressive option, while a majority of lower-income non-voters supported it. Just look at the numbers on these powerful ideas. Increasing aid to the poor. Government guaranteeing jobs and high living standards. A high enough minimum wage to keep workers out of poverty. Politicians are accountable to the people who put them in office, and right now a donor class that is whiter, wealthier, and more male than the population as a whole is voting with their money and at the ballot box. But when we, the people, all vote in numbers, they will be accountable to us. The barriers that many potential voters face are well known. Right-wing politicians have created a whole arsenal of tactics, from photo ID requirements to reducing early voting, closing polling places, purging voters who are already registered from the rolls, and barring people with criminal records from voting. All designed to keep people of color, young people, and people with lower incomes from casting a ballot. And don't forget the tens of millions of aspiring Americans who desperately want a path to citizenship. By blocking their path, the right wing is blocking their vote, too. But what if we pushed back and demanded a government that helps citizens to vote rather than suppresses our vote? One way is to eliminate the biggest barrier to voting in the first place and automatically register every eligible citizen through automatic voter registration. Instead of requiring people to seek out the proper forms, offices, and deadlines for voter registration, states can automatically enroll their residents using information they already have on file. At Demos, we crunched the numbers and estimated that automatic voter registration nationwide would instantly add 27 million new registered voters to the rolls, more than half of the 51 million eligible people who are currently unregistered. But don't just take my word for it. The state of Oregon implemented AVR in 2016, and here's what they found. 95% of people who were registered through AVR were first-time voters in the 2016 elections. And there are other practical fixes for low voter participation. Why not enable people to create or update their registrations the same day they vote, rather than making us meet an arbitrary cutoff? Why not let everybody vote at home and send our ballot in the mail? And why do we have to vote on a Tuesday? Just think about the kinds of changes we could make if everyone voted. We could enact policies to create better paying jobs and better working conditions. We could rebuild opportunity through debt-free college. We could end mass incarceration and clear the path to citizenship. We could protect our families with universal health care, reproductive justice, and a real safety net. And we could finally check the corporate power that has polluted our democracy. These aren't pie-in-the-sky goals. These are the ideas that most Americans support, but these ideas are underrepresented as long as we are underrepresented. The midterm elections are coming up on November 6th, and any politician who doesn't respect our vote shouldn't get our vote. Tell your friends, you want to know how America can get out of the mess we're in? Vote. Everyone, vote. <laughs>